Hi, welcome to my channel. My name is Christina Kent and I'm an oil painter based out of San Francisco. And today I want to give you a tour of my very messy home art studio. I've been wanting to do a new studio tour video for a while now. Um, my last studio tour video was over a year ago and since then I've moved and some things have changed in my studio. But I've held off on it because honestly my studio is not exactly how I would like it to look. There are a lot of things I want to change, a lot of modifications I want to make, and so I was holding off on giving you guys a studio tour until after I'd made those changes. But then I thought to myself, you know, my studio is always going to be a work in progress. It's always going to need changes, and I'm probably never going to feel like I have the perfect studio. So instead, I'm going to share my studio with you as it is today with all of its messiness and imperfections. And I hope that by sharing my messy, imperfect art studio with you, it can inspire you to embrace your own messy and imperfect creative space. Because I think sometimes the hardest thing and the most important thing with setting up an art studio or any creative space is just getting started. Just putting that easel in the corner, getting that box for your paints, having this, this like designated area to be making your art. I think it's easy to get wrapped up in what we see on Instagram or YouTube when we see artists who have really beautiful studios. And we can think, well, I need my studio to look like that before I can start making art. But I think it's better to start making art with an imperfect studio than to wait for the perfect studio that might never come along. And once you've started with something, once you have the building blocks for an art studio, it's a lot easier to make improvements along the way. You can learn what things you like, what things you don't like, what your studio needs, and what you can take away. Okay, so with that in mind, let's check out my studio. So here's my studio and you can see it's kind of a mess, um, but I love it and this is where I make my paintings every day. Um, here is the most important part of the studio is my easel. Um, so I used to have a much smaller easel, which was great when I was doing small daily paintings, but it didn't really work well for um, larger canvases. Um, so now I've gotten this larger easel, which has this kind of adjustable thing. It can move down pretty low, so it can accommodate really large canvases. And it has these wood panels behind them that, that also help to hold up the larger canvases. Also on my easel, I have this lamp. It's like a, I think it's a 5000K, it's supposed to kind of simulate daylight. And then I just put this um, this piece of computer paper over it to diffuse some of the light when it comes onto the panels so that it's just, it's not too strong. I also have my apron, which I always use when I'm painting because I make a huge mess. And then here, this is actually a little brush holder. It has this like elastic bands here. So it clips onto the easel and then it has elastic bands. So you can just take a brush like this and then you can stick it in the holder and it keeps all your brushes kind of um, separated and, and upright for easy use. And since I'm standing at the easel all day, I also have a yoga mat here that I can stand on while I'm painting to just keep my feet comfortable. You can also see I have a lot of wires all over the ground. I do a lot of filming and I use a lot of different lights. So um, having wires is something that I've been dealing with. Hopefully in my next studio, I'll find a way to organize these better. But for now, I just kind of try to keep them off to the side. Here is where I keep my paints. I love these pegboards. Um, these are great. I just got the pegboard from like Home Depot and put some uh, wood there to kind of keep it away from the wall, but you can get something similar I think from Ikea. I love them for organizing my paints because then I can just easily grab the paints when I need them. I can see all the colors that I have and I can see how much I have of each color. I have my main paints that I use here in larger tubes and then I have some of the other colors I like to use in these smaller tubes. The colors that I use by far the most are titanium white, cadmium red, yellow ochre, ultramarine blue, cadmium yellow, and also more recently, Naples yellow. Um, I also have some medium over here, and then I have a few other supplies like my palette knives, rulers, a uh, brayer for creating texture on the canvas, and also some painter's tape. Over here is where I keep my brushes. Um, it also serves as a still life little table when I'm doing still life paintings. So I also have this lamp here to light the still life paintings and then my paper towels that I use to clean off my brushes during the painting process. The brushes I use are mostly flats. You can see they're of 
various sizes ranging from, I think this is like a two to even like a 12 or a 10. Um, some of them are pretty dirty. Some of them are brand new. I tend to abuse my brushes. I don't treat them very well. So I go through them kind of quickly. So I usually like to have some new brushes ready to go. I also have some larger brushes over here when I'm working on bigger canvases. I really like um, these kind of like gesso brushes for working on big canvases and just scrubbing the paint in. I find they work really well for that. Um, and they can create some just really nice, beautiful marks, especially these like really big brushes. Um, and then here I have some smaller brushes. Some of these I take when I go plein air painting or when I'm painting in the sketchbook. Also a lot of flats, but some rounds um, and other, other types of brushes too. Down here, it's kind of a strange space. I mostly put some miscellaneous supplies there. So I have a scale for packages. I have this piece of cardboard that I use for mixing paint if I'm just quickly um, doing an underpainting. I have some medium and some other stuff for acrylic painting. Um, but yeah, this is an area that I like to reorganize and put to better use when I, when I organize my studio. And then in the drawers I have in this first drawer, um, a lot of extra oil paints, either paints that I don't use very often, maybe I bought them for a workshop and don't use them or haven't used them recently, or um, replacement tubes for the paints that I use a lot, just so that if I do, so that I, I, I don't usually run out of paints and I always have some backup. Then here I have some supplies for acrylic gouache painting, um, my Stay Wet palette that I use to keep the gouache paints wet, some replacement pages for that palette. Um, I also have a bunch of papers that I cut for collaging. I got interested in collaging recently, so I'm just I just prepared some um, some papers for that, and yeah. Then in this next bin, I have all my acrylic gouache paints. Um, so these are the paints that I use for sketching. I also like to take them traveling. Um, they're nice because you can bring them on a plane, which is great, and they dry very quickly. So it's really nice if you're traveling and just sketching something fast. Um, these are great paints. Then in this next drawer is also kind of some miscellaneous stuff. Um, I have gesso, which is really important for preparing panels, some extra lights, um, some blocks for sanding, things like that. And then in the last drawer, which I can't fully open because my easel is in the way, I have just some stuff for filming, little tripods, ring light, etc. Off to the side, I have my tripod for when I go plein air painting. This supports my um, Yugo easel. I also have some different things for packaging paintings. So um, plastic sleeves for shipping paintings, some glassine paper for wrapping the paintings, um, craft paper for packaging, things like that. And then here's my constantly overflowing trash can full of paint soiled paper towels that I need to dispose of at hazardous waste. To the left of my easel, I have this organizer here. I usually set my palette up here while I'm painting. I'm left-handed, so it's nice to have it on the left side here. Um, and then in here, I keep a lot of different papers. So I have this little notebook where sometimes I'll take notes on paintings, um, just some papers for printing, papers for collage or like still life setups. Um, here's some other collage paper. And then I've also stored a lot of panels here. Sometimes they even leave paintings to dry in this little area so that they don't, they don't get dust on them. I like to use panels from Ampersand. So this is like Ampersand gesso board. It's nice, it comes pre-primed. It's a little expensive, um, but it comes pre-primed with white paint and then I'll usually put a layer of some warmer color. Um, so I like to have a lot of them always in stock in my studio. Um, I do tend to paint, I paint almost every day. So um, it's nice to have a lot of them so I don't have to order them too frequently. Okay, so this next section is also a huge mess, kind of like the section on the other organizer. If I have a lot of open space, it seems like I just <laughs> really struggle with keeping it organized. Um, so something I'll change in the future. But here's, I have a drawing pad for a figure drawing, also some charcoal supplies for a figure drawing as well, um, or just sketching in general. And then I have some other just panels, papers, miscellaneous stuff. Yeah, it's kind of become the home to supplies that I don't have another spot for. And then these later parts of the organizer. So I really like this organizer that has all these like kind of thin levels. Um, but yeah, I use it to organize some of my other papers that I can use for painting, um, some like mixed media paper. Like I really like the Strathmore 
mixed media paper is great. Um, I also use it to put paintings that are drying. So once again, uh, easel is in the way, so I can't fully pull this one out. But this painting is on cradled wood panel, so I, I put it here to dry so it doesn't get any dust on it. Um, I have some oil paper here as well and scraps of oil paper. Here's another painting that's drying. Um, and then I also keep a bunch of panels, which I try to organize by size. So these are kind of the smaller, like 9 by 12 or 8 by 10. And then I have some 11 by 14 panels here. And then down here I have um, some of my plastic sleeves for shipping paintings so that they, when they're traveling, they don't get damaged. And I have them in, in various sizes. And lastly, I have some other brushes and stuff down here and my paper cutter, which is really useful for shipping. And then I really need to find a spot for these, but these are my panel packs. They're what I use to travel when I, when I have plein air paintings, like oil paintings that are not dry that I did in plein air. Um, this is a great way to carry them when you're traveling. Um, so yeah, highly recommend these. Um, no space for them in my studio, but usually I take them out when I'm plein air painting. And then behind the easel, I have my shipping supplies in kind of this laundry basket. I have my trusty Bob Ross box, which has a lot of little shipping things in there. Um, have some paper that I use for packing. I try to like reuse paper and bubble wrap whenever I get packages so that I can use them to pack my own paintings. Um, I also have some boxes and some mailers in here. Um, yeah, I'm hoping in my next studio iteration, I'm not gonna have the packaging behind the easel because it's very hard to get to um, when I have a painting here, um, but for now it works. And then behind my easel here is where I keep my larger canvases and then also some panels that are prepped for painting. These ones, I just put some gesso on them so they're drying. And then these ones, I just did the underpainting and I'm letting them dry over here. And I like to have, like with my panels, I like to have various sizes of canvases in, in my studio all the time um, so that whenever I have an idea, I'm able to just grab one and go for it. And then behind the easel, I have some plants. I really like to have some greenery in the studio. Um, I also have some inspiration for my art, and then I have some planning for my art shows this year. I also have my wall of rejections over here. It's all my rejections from the previous two years, and I found it like really helpful to help overcome my fear of rejection by putting it up on the wall. Somehow it just makes it less scary and easier to deal with rejection. I also have these wood slats where I can set some of the paintings on panel to dry. Although I've been painting a lot more on cradled wood panel, which doesn't quite fit here. But when I'm painting on the flat panels, this is where I usually let them dry. And here's some other little exercises and master copies that I did. Um, whenever I do little things like this, I like to put them up on the wall, um, just as a reminder of what inspires me. So yeah, I hope you like this tour of my art studio. Let me know if this video gave you inspiration for your own art studio, or if you have any recommendations for me on how I can make my studio better. Also, a huge shout out to my supporters on Patreon. Thank you guys so much for supporting this channel and for supporting my art. And if you like my art, if you like my videos, then consider joining my Patreon at the link below. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.